been a while since I used one of these. Is this how this thing works? Hello, my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tankering and Adventures. Today, we're going to work on some pencil sharpeners. Uh, my lovely trophy wife is a teacher here. And if you know anyone who is a teacher, you know that they just don't get enough money for supplies. And the kids are not easy on the supplies. So I tend to try to help her fix some stuff when it breaks rather than replacing it because it will get awful expensive. Uh, in this case, these two pencil sharpeners, uh, she's actually had these for quite a while. Let's take a look at them. I don't see... There's not really a name brand on them. It says on the bottom Staples, so I imagine they came from Staples. Um, but she's had these for quite a while. They've lasted fairly well. Um, but she said she caught a couple of kids sharpening the erasers <laughs> on the pencils. So I'm not a pencil sharpener mechanic, but I'm a tinkerer. So let's get to taking these things apart, see if we can't get them back into circulation and uh, maybe teach those kids that, uh, you know, that's the end that you sharpen, or you can poke your eye out with it, but uh, we won't do that. So let me grab some tools and we'll see you here on the workbench. We could easily go on about a tale of, you know, growing up years ago and not having an electric pencil sharpener, and having to crank it by hand, walking to school barefoot in the snow three miles uphill both ways, but uh, you know, this 2019 electric pencil sharpener is an all right thing to have. And you know what? I love it when people go online and, and bitch about how people got it easier these days. You know, when you're going online bitching about it. If you really want to be that old timer and bitch about how easy things there are these days. Maybe you ought to uh, carve it in a stone tablet and deliver it on foot or on a horse or something. I don't know. Okay, so we got a lot of, lot of crud in here. But I can see some more screws. You see them there? There's one, two, three, four. I'm going to get a good workout with the, uh, with the old air compressor here, I have a feeling. Blowing all this out. And maybe even we will adhere to our... Uh, Motto around the shop here, safety third. We'll think about it and then we'll put on some uh, safety glasses before we uh, engage the old uh, air nozzle, blowing this stuff around. Imagine pencil shavings and uh, pencil lead as they call it. It's not lead. I'm sure my intelligent viewers know that, but uh, I'm sure none of that stuff would be good to get into our eyes. Because without our eyes, we can't watch YouTube videos. There's one. The other one doesn't want to come out. Oh, look at that. Now there's even more screws underneath here. This thing is just held on with screws everywhere. Sort of a switch in the front, I guess. We'll figure that out in a moment. Let's see, what's it gonna take here? More screws in there. I really just need to get this thing apart so I can see if there's a pencil eraser jammed up in here somewhere, which I'm hoping is the case. A friend of mine posted something on uh, social media about uh, original VCRs when they, they came out and how expensive they were. And uh, I was like, yeah, I remember that. I bought a VCR back in the early days, you know, VCR cost, you know, four or five hundred dollars then. Well, I don't even know if they make VCRs anymore, but uh, four or five 
four or five hundred dollars back in the 80s was a lot of money and people used to repair everything then it used to be tv repair shops and vcr repair shops and all that sort of stuff i don't think people hardly even repair a computer anymore these days most of the time unless it's a top of the line computer um, people aren't gonna people aren't gonna repair it because it's just not worth it when you can buy another one for uh, a couple hundred dollars why are you gonna pay somebody a couple hundred dollars to repair it so repairing a couple of pencil sharpeners is definitely not a common occurrence I don't think but it does bring me satisfaction working on things like this. I like knowing that if something breaks and there isn't a replacement available, that there's a possibility that I could repair it. And everything I work on like this leads to a little bit more knowledge in repairing something that may be, uh, you know, more important down the road. So, if you want to learn how to fix things, bigger things, you can start on smaller things like this. Working on a silly $15, $20 pencil sharpener when you can just toss it in the trash and go buy another one. And I mean, in today's day and age, you don't even have to leave the couch. You can order it right off your phone and have it shipped to you the next day. Um, it may not make a lot of sense initially, but by working on something like this, you're, you're opening your mind a little bit to how things work. And hopefully that will help you to learn how to fix larger items. Let's see if you can focus in there, but I can see a pencil eraser jammed in there. Let me see if I can grab a, a light of some sort off of my workbench here. And show you the prime culprit here. There you go. So now we just have to figure out how to fish that out of there and we may have to take this apart even more to get into there. There were two more screws here. One and two over here. And then this unit comes off. And then that unit comes out of there. Dropped a giant piece of lead, graphite. And once again, our suspect is in there. So now we just have to fish that out of there one way or another. Or like that, it might just fall out into your hand. <laughs> so I'm going to grab the air nozzle. We're going to blow all this out and we will reassemble it. And then uh, do a test run. When it comes to reassembling things like this, sometimes you just get frustrated. Way down in here is... I know the light's not good, I'm sorry, but way down in there is where you need to get these screws. Right down in there, you can't barely even see it because it's kind of around a little bracket. Now you try to get your finger in there, there's not a lot of room. You try to get a screw in with a needle nose pliers and you're holding onto the round end of it and it's flopping everywhere. You might have a magnetic screwdriver. Um, so here's a little tip. Hopefully you can see it in the background here. I got some grease. Put some grease on the end of the screwdriver. And that's gravity, my friends. It's a law, but we can beat it sometimes. Put a little grease on it. And it's gonna hold it on there, and we got it in. Of course, now we got grease on that screw, but hey, it's in there. So, just a little unconventional thinking sometimes. And this uh, goes right back to what I said. You learn how to work on something like this um, pencil sharpener, which doesn't have a whole lot of value, but it's broken already, so you're not going to hurt anything by taking it apart. It doesn't have a lot of value, so you're not hurting anything by taking it apart. And the little tips and tricks that you learn by working on things like this is going to correlate into working on anything else you want to work on in your life, whether it be a car or home repair, or uh, aviation, anything. So, fiddling around with little things around the house. I love that word, fiddling. <laughs> is going to um, 
help you become better at working on everything. There you go. Grease. Oh, if you don't have that, you could use Crisco. <laughs> One reassembled pencil sharpener. We'll adjust it to the size we need here. Looks sharp. Let's see what else I got here. I might have to go break this one off until I sharpen all mine on my grinder. Quite a fine precision point yet. Okay. We got one back in service. We'll do the same on the other one. I'll take you back for the test. And uh, if anything odd is inside of there, I'll let you know. Looks like they were a little bit more successful on the second one here. They got two erasers and one metal sharpened in there. It got me thinking about when, uh, you know, a kid does something silly, and you ask him, why did you do that? I don't know. I just did it. <laughs> and uh, I remember doing silly stuff like that when I was a kid. I don't know why the hell I did it. Why would you stick the eraser in the pencil sharpener? It sounded like a good idea at the time. But uh, there you go. There's our, there's our debris what causing our jam on this thing. So we get the second one together, and we'll test it out in a second. Let's see if she works. Hmm, green pencil. It's a green pencil, but it doesn't have green. Lead. All right, well, that's all the pencils I have in my shop. So there you have it. We got two pencil sharpeners. Back in business here. Teaching our youth how to properly uh, sharpen pencils, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out in the shop with me today. Getting a little philosophical talking about pencil sharpeners, but uh, hey, you know, you have to, uh, have to look at life that way sometimes. It's not just a pencil sharpener, it's an opportunity to learn a little something about working on things, you know? And uh, when I'm in my garage, my mind is off of other things. So it's therapy for me. And I need therapy. You can ask my wife, she'll tell you. <laughs> if you're enjoying the videos that I'm putting out, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Oh, yeah, dirty thumbs up even today. And uh, leave a comment down below and over on, well, I don't know, sometimes these videos get reversed, but this side? Somewhere down there, there's that red subscribe button, and I'd really appreciate it if you hit that. It lets me know I got people watching these videos, and it gets me talking about stupid stuff and fixing silly things and going crazy places and just doing all that sort of stuff that hopefully y'all are enjoying. So, thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.